All right, y'all, let's all look at this truck. A little bit dirty. Well, guess what? We got rained out of our deck on morning hunt this morning and the dang wind switched. So, so we done a little driving around scouting and went to a, a place that we first got it when we first got here to check out because of this funky wind that we got. So we'll, we're actually gonna make it back to it and hunt some fresh scrapes and stuff that's associated with this monster of a cornfield back here and the river system so supposed to cool off tonight but still they're pro projecting that gum rain off and on the rest of the week and times but anyway we got to get with it period so so we just have to deal with it somehow or another so tomorrow we're gonna get to go back in the morning to that big buck spot where matthew had seen that monster the other day so we'll get back make it back in there in the morning and after that it's gonna be iffy so but tracks are bigger everywhere everywhere we went looking around at tracks are getting bigger so so they're slightly moving more so we talked to a guy from wisconsin and he said that the next couple of weeks and uh he gave us some advice like he said whenever they start reacting to rattling he said you rattle like you're trying to break the antlers he said they love it for some reason here in kansas he said he's and they've been from wisconsin he's that they'll run from him wisconsin doing that so pretty good info because we got rattling horns so but we are like uh we seen another buck this morning crossing the road so so we're starting to see more movement period of bucks so so that's pretty neat so but we are going to get with it for this evening hunt get ready what are you waxing that strange boy Got water in it? Gear maintenance. Gear maintenance. Key. Have you got enough gear? We've got too dang much. <laughs> What's your projection? Getting one flat. Get one flat? Yep. Gold still the same, 150 or bigger? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the camera when I'm talking to you. Can't measure them till they're on the ground, though. <laughs> Might be a little short, but. Might be a little short. <laughs> All right. But sure, dear. As long as you're happy. Yep. As long as he's happy. I'm happy, so. Anyway, wind gusting about 10 mile an hour. Not too bad right now, so it's pretty good, so. So we're gonna stick it and see what happens. So we'll get back with y'all. All right, y'all. Welcome back to 18 Outdoors. This is video number two for Kansas. I know I've already done a little interview at the truck, but you know I forgot about it being the the new interview. I already got one video done. So so anyway, this will be the fourth evening set that we've done. So this morning we got out of whack because we drove all the way to the place we got to and it rained a little bit but the worst thing was the wind was not blowing the way that gum weather said it was the opposite up in there where we want to go hunt and that uh, no go so so we went to another place right there pretty close looking nothing worth hunting really far as we could see so we made another couple of little trips and then now we come back to a place that we one of the first places we scouted the first day of scout maybe the second day of scout anyways a bunch of dang tracks around this place big huge cornfield back that way there. humongous and there's one of them squirrels up there barking at me i don't know where he's at anyway he don't like it i'm here so but down here behind this uh cornfield a couple of drains just coming up you can see there's water down there so point over there point over there that would be a 60 yard shot that'd probably be a no-go but it's 35 yards over at that point so and then over here's close to this trail coming up through here rubs and scrapes so still a little bit warm but hey gotta deal with what we got so for hanging in there. I don't know if you can see that dang squirrel or not. But he's, sucker's mad. 
Yeah, there he is right there. I guess I'm in his tree. Anyway, Matthew's kind of set up about 150 yards away from me. Area that's got three or four fresh dang scrapes. And that track's coming. We seen five sets of tracks that's fresh since the rain, and it rained all the way till 11 o'clock this morning. So, so anyway, it's getting closer because we seen another buck crossing the road this morning going hunting. So they're moving. So moving more anyway. These weren't monster bucks that we seen, but they were decent size. So, so let's get situated and get kind of set up and uh, be quiet for the rest of the evening. So hey. All y'all cats in Alabama and all that's hunting. Not on the muzzleloader hunts on day two, I think, and that Black Warrior. So, and maybe Chocolaka. So good luck to all y'all. Hope y'all having fun. So, and having good luck. So, kind of wish I was there too. But hey, we're doing. We're going outside the box. We're trying to spread our wings a little bit. You know, do some lifetime achievements. Maybe hopefully. So, so anyway, I'm gonna be quiet and. Uh, Hopefully this daggum squirrel will get quiet. So anyway, we'll see y'all in a bit. They say it pays. Pay you not more put no, pay you not to put no more on there. <laughs> oh man. He's laughing. Listen y'all. We're back from our fourth evening hunt, I do believe, right? Fourth evening hunt. So. Yep. Most frustrating day kind of today, which I mean, we're having fun regardless, but we got up this morning wide open to go to our main morning spot. And of course it's dead gum raining. And then when we get over, there, it's uh, not a good wind. Actually, terrible wind, <laughs> a sucky wind. So we could not do that. So what we did, we drove around a little bit, looking for a couple more places, and then um, went and uh, ended up hunting this evening at a place we scouted earlier, big cornfield that has a bunch of name tracks and a bunch of rubs and fresh scrapes in it, but it, the wind was gonna be kinda edgy, and we knew that. And uh, we went out there and got set up, and crap, it wasn't 15, 20 daggum minutes, it don't seem like to me. Some daggum deer started daggum blowing, and we ain't too sure, but we think it's not gone either. I've seen me or something. And it sounded like it was a pretty good ways off and it started blowing to me, which of course I can't hear thunder hardly. So then about an hour or so later, it's not gonna come back or there's a different deer one or two. Start blowing again. This time the circuit's close. So, so, and it could have been because of the wind because it was kind of edgy, but the deer was, that gum had to be bedded right by the dang cornfield, basically, right? Because it's circuit. So. And we'll set up about 100 yards or so. Well, no, about 200 yards apart, maybe. So, Probably. So, so that didn't do, that didn't go so well. We didn't see any deer, you know, seen a few squirrels, stuff like that. Good looking dang spot. I mean, I, but anyway, didn't work out. But we did talk to a guy from Wisconsin that actually had lived here and, and got his lifetime hunting license. Comes here every year. So, information for y'all, good information, is he has some good tips. He said, number one was rattling. You know, he said, you know, rattling don't do too good where he's at. And Wisconsin said, they'll run from it a lot. And he said, but here, he said, you try to tear them horns up, try to break them. And he said, he's had ain't no telling how many deer, I mean, come to him. He just, he said, it's very incredible how they react to it. So, so that's, that's key to know. So, and it's just, did he give any more tips? So, oh, a decoy. A decoy was another one. He had a decoy with him, which we are. We got decoy and we got rattling horns, so we're kind of prepared for that. So, so they are reactive to stuff that's not as reactive like they do for us in the southern states. So, you know, I don't ever, I don't never try to tear horns up. I'm on. I don't know if I, I ain't. You know, I've only rattled in a, a few deer, and so it's kind of. If you try to tire up some big old horns in Alabama, them some are gonna run because they're scared to death, stuff like that, because most of their deer ain't that big. So 
Here I would say with more mature buck competition, I guess it would work. So, Cause we seen like we seen a nice buck this morning crossing the road and some does. So, so we're seeing more movement, you know, like going to the our hunting area. So, sets picking up. I don't know if I've ever in, in a week of Alabama driving to a place, say, so if we're camping at Black Warrior, Oak Mogi, or whatever, is we could ever seen four bucks in the morning. So four bucks in the morning, four rack bucks, not a little spikes or nothing. I'm talking about racks, four to four, eight point to ten point, twelve point or something. So pretty nice bucks. So and that just don't happen in Alabama for us. No, so. I think uh, Okamogi years ago. I've seen uh, like that, a couple, but not that that many. I've seen like three or four going so. in, nice bucks. Yeah, back in the day, not no more. Oh. So. So anyway, we're uh. I just got to eat mint peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I guess you're going to starve over it. Yeah, eat a water bottle. He's going to eat a water bottle. So we're getting down to slim pickings. We've been here eight days. So, And uh, Kathy said that uh, a rat there said that she got everything handled at the house that we could stay till we killed a deer. So, of course, that might be next year. I don't know. She might not go with that. Because so, so far, you know, we've had one shot. So one actual shot took. So, and then... A couple more close calls, which is pretty good. Again, you know, this is our fourth day of hunting, basically. So, but we're having fun, so we're gonna wrap this up and uh, get us a nap. And tomorrow it is not supposed to rain. So, but the weather app thing—you can't trust that thing for nothing. So we have not had much luck with that yet. So you got to go to your daggone place and, and make sure. Best thing is to have multiple access points to get into an area because. I'm one of them, I don't like walking through a bunch of stuff to get somewhere and running the whole thing because you're trying to, you know, plan, you know, outside in hunting, you know, least impact as you can. So, so that part's kind of, because we're new to the area with first time being here, kind of makes that tough a little bit. So, but, so we're being careful, you know, and that guy did say that uh, he expects it to pick up more next week you know but still not gonna have the cold cold weather but it's gonna be 30s you know so not real cold but cold enough so that ought to pick them up so we hope so so we're gonna keep y'all posted and uh, appreciate everything kathy said to tell y'all appreciate the prayers and stuff everything doing a little bit better so keep that up and uh if you haven't liked or subscribe please do it so we really appreciate it so Final word there, old oh, dear master. Ah, well, we ought to have something done within the next five days. Have something done in the next five days. Well, I think we ought to have something flat. But I next ain't talking about days. no doe killer. Hey, the deer's a deer. They taste the same. No, they don't. I, guess. I like looking at the taste of the hamburger <laughs> looking at the big horns up there. <laughs> big rat. So, anyway, we're working on it. Yep. Uh, pretty confident for tomorrow though. First cold. We'll He's confident. see. He's confident, y'all. Is he is he calling his shot? It might be. Might be. I don't know. Gut feeling says it's gonna get better tomorrow. I like cold weather. One thing about this filmmaking stuff, is, hey, I can't edit it. Where it makes it <laughs> where, where it makes it look good, it makes it look bad, one of the two. <laughs> so. But now we're trying to be as realistic. We're not going to be any, doing anything crazy. I will tell you the truth. Trust me, because we always have, we always will. We don't want to be no, nope. no, uh, no fakers or anything. So. We make mistakes just like everybody else. Yeah. And same mistake twice is usually. <laughs> yeah, take three times. To, 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 to sink, in. <laughs> to sink in. Sink <laughs> in. Anyway, you know that wind stuff. That's that's a you can't uh, beat the wind. That's a nemesis here. And this place so far is. <laughs> It's had three different winds. You know, Alabama generally a north wind and a south southwest wind is about it. Up here, you dig them get an east wind, east, or they go west. East is good. So, but and south is really good. <laughs> so, but I mean, we don't get that multiple winds to me in Alabama. Or I ain't never noticed it. So, all right, we're gonna wrap this up, get some nap, and uh, we'll keep y'all posted. We're gonna be up at four o'clock in the morning and heading that way because our good spot is supposed to have the good wind. You know, so we'll find out. For and one day. For one day. 
and he's calling a shot. So, so we'll see for one day for this week, I guess. Right? Yep. So, all right, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Good morning, y'all. Man, what a nice day in the woods it was this morning. It was about 35 degrees. Pretty calm. And uh, I cannot believe that I let, did not see a deer. So, only, this will be the fifth morning set. I've seen deer three out of five, so. Can't really complain, but man, if this has been one of the best mornings I think besides it might have been a little bit too calm, so most of the time when we're seeing a deer, the wind is blowing pretty good. But the setup is in a like again, this has been the second time I've sat in here, so hardwood drainage in between sage prairie stuff and there's a creek that comes down and we got a high hump right there transition edge back that way so generally what we're expecting and what we've seen right here in this area because of this that high hump if deer travel through here they're going to come through that way or this way as secondary you hope know, i'm walking in from that way so winds coming into face so only been a couple of times and it's been like it since we've been here but again when you're looking for areas and this place has got a bunch of rubs and stuff in it, it's great so and there's corn across the road four or five hundred yards so it's a perfect little transition you know area and I always kind of remember when you're looking for pinches and stuff subtle things like that's just a that's a creek that makes a bend that's got a high bank you know they're not going to if they're going to cross or come through there, they're going to come above this or way on the other side of it. So it's just, when you're setting up close to sign, like there's droppings and, and rubs and tracks right here. So, and this edge, so it just gives you a kind of a idea. And there's thick stuff back that way. So suspected bedding that way. So it's kind of, just think of the subtle things when you're, Kind of setting up on how you want to try to, especially with a bow or a crossbow, is you want you want them to try to be close to the edge and the pinch to to get a shot. So didn't work out this morning, but it is what it is. I mean, you got to be here to do it. So and the beast stand set up there. So pretty comfy, pretty 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 comfortable for the. For a light stand, it's pretty like up amazing. So, so I've been here and it's nearly 11 o'clock, so about five hours now, and not an issue. So, I'm fixing to get ready to go down and meet Matthew and see if he's had any luck, and then uh, discuss where we're gonna go this evening. So, we'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, welcome back to 18 Outdoors. This is a closeout for my morning hunt of November 6th. I had uh, two, I got over two little bucks this morning. <laughs> seen one on the other side of a ridge, about 100 yards. You seen my decoy. He came in to my decoy. Then behind me, I had another little six point came in. And he was underneath my stand while the seven point was coming in. And he was all brussled up ready to fight my decoy but neither one of them were shooters they were just little year and a half year old bucks but it's been a nice cold morning it's the first one we've really had since we've been out here but Mike's over to my right, about 150 yards. I don't know if he's seen anything, but the two little ones, they kind of head off this way. I got to watch them two little ones spar out here to my right, which is pretty cool. It's always cool to see uh, nature in this wild state. All right, so let's gonna close it out.
See Matthew down there? He climbed down and he got him a decoy set up right there. He's trying hard, folks. Don't forget about the decoy stuff. Just pay it, but be very careful gun hunting, of course, but of course we're bow hunting, so. All right, y'all. I don't forgot what uh, number of evening hunt this will be, but this is November 6th. So. In the evening, uh, this morning I didn't see anything, but Matthew seen two young bucks and actually got to watch them spar a little bit, so. One of them, I think both of them come down and checked out his little decoy head out, and so. And well, so anyway, we come over to one of our evening spots, and actually two of our evening spots, and the vehicle was parked at both of them, so we walked into a uh, hanging hope, I guess you could say. It's a different area, a bunch of dang pasture. There's a pasture behind me. There's a drainage right over there, and uh, that drainage you're looking at right there, I jumped what looked like a buck out of that while I'm easing down here, but by itself, and it looked like a pretty good body, and so I was pretty sure it was a buck, but it went toward Matthew. I tried texting him, let him know it was heading his way, but you know, who knows, who knows where it went, so. Got this drainage right here, so. Pretty good, it's in between a bunch of stuff, and uh, actually there's a cornfield across there, as you can see that, so. This is one of them wee haul properties, one of them walk-in hunting access. It's a pretty neat, you know, program that they got to do that, so we appreciate it, so. But I mean, we're having fun. We're seeing bucks, you know, even though I didn't see anything today, but crap, that area, that morning spot over there is, is from year and a half old all the way to like five-year-old, that big, big, and he's saying he couldn't get no shot on, but then he shot at a, a, we're assuming it was a four-year-old, so. Buck Haven over right now, so we'll we'll see how that keeps going. So, of course, we've been here past a week, but so we'll have to see what the weather. It's good weather right now. A little breezy, but that's the way I like it. So, so hang in there, and hopefully we'll figure out a way to get one flat sooner or later. So, I'm in a kind of an awkward tree, so I don't know if you can see. So, a little bit awkward sitting, but. Didn't have much choice, and I don't want to mess around too much more since I jumped that deer up. I don't know what, because over on that side over there, there's some thick, nasty stuff. So, might be some bedding. So, I'm hoping something will walk its drainage right down here, about 25 yard shot, when they're trying to access that cornfield. So, but we'll see. So, we'll let y'all know tonight. We'll see y'all. Welcome to 18 Outdoors. We're out here in the field, evening hunt. Got a cornfield behind me. A cedar thicket in front of me and a pond to the left I mean it's kind of overcast a little bit cool it should be a good night so I know we missed last night so and uh, so I'm gonna get Matthew there to give him an update what happened yesterday yesterday morning yesterday morning I didn't see anything Matthew had two little bucks come in had what Two little bucks came in. What did they do? Uh, one of them came down from the hillside. And one of them snuck up behind me. But they come together and started fighting a little bit, playing around. But neither one of them were shooters, year and a half old. They see you decoy. Put yeah. that phone down. Yeah. So we're doing a video. They played with Leroy. One of them was all furled up, and wanting to get Leroy. <laughs> His decoy is named Leroy. <laughs> so, well, I hadn't seen nothing yesterday morning. So then we went to uh, some of the other spots, the hour and a half drive, and got over there. And two of the main spots we had was people was already parked there. So we went to a hanging hope area, went in there, and uh, you didn't see anything there. Nope. So didn't see a dead gum deer track. Cut cornfield. Didn't see a track nowhere. There's only they had like three or four drainage ditches that run into one big ditch that uh, met up against another cornfield. And while I was easing down there, there was a deer jumped up on one other opposite side of one of them ditches and uh, done that old tail wag, just a dang strut. So I'm 99% sure it was a buck, it wasn't a doe. So, so I set up down there for a little while and Matthew set up on another little finger. So didn't see anything else. Then the, this morning, 
What happened this morning? Well, this morning I had a nice buck come in. They got about 25 yards away and was doing a pawing underneath the tree and stuff. So he took us uh, two steps through the tree. I was just have a really good shot. Then uh, unfortunately I put Leroy wrong. He seen Leroy backwards and didn't like him. And he eased out and left and broke my heart. <laughs> so he's about a 130 plus inch buck. Very nice. Wow, that 20 something yards. So. 25 yards. Oh. So close as I can see the moisture on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's something. I had a doe with a this year's baby, which is pretty good size, come by 20 something yards, and I was hoping a duck was behind, a buck would be behind them, but didn't happen. But it was, you know, perfect scenario, perfect setup. If a buck would be behind, would have been behind them, so so we had a great day. And I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all folks that live out here in this Midwest, this has been that gun fun. So yeah, so. I hope y'all really appreciate what y'all got because that's pretty amazing that what we've this is the sixth day of hunting and we've been here probably nine, ten days. Yeah. Like we've been here about ten days total. So and we hunted six days. We kinda of some scouting and some of the rainy weather we didn't mess with and we've been playing wind with some of the areas that we're hunting. So uh, but crap. A bunch of bucks we've seen, so getting into about six potential shooter especially if he's in alabama so it's i mean within six hunts that's a shooter a day you know basically i've only seen two that had the opportunity that i could have shot so matthew over there has been seeing them stacked up like cordwood by him so anyway we've uh i don't know how many deer total we've seen but several so pretty amazing you know just you know a lot of people are starting to get out here now so it's starting to get a little bit more pressure but they say they're gonna be on it they're gonna be moving so they say like the target date for prime time movement is 11th so we're not gonna have the cold cold weather while we're here i don't look like but we're gonna have some decent weather here after i think we've got a front coming in tomorrow evening so i think it'll be a little bit better at yeah i think it's supposed to be get out of the high 30s all next week so well that'll be great so so we're looking forward to that, and, you know, which we still got this weekend left. We're, today's Thursday, so we're still hanging in there. So we're going to get a little rest and get back after it hard because it's been, we've been busy. So we've been nonstop. So, so we're trying to get them flat. We're working on it. We're getting close. So Matthew's getting real close. So, so hopefully, you know, we'll have some luck. Show you all here in a couple of days. We'll see. I know there's been a couple of people that have posted some Kansas big giant ones. I don't know if they're private land or public or what, but they're whoppers. So, of course, it's got the potential. So, so we're going to wrap this up. We might watch a little Thursday night football or something. And I may, maybe get a little snack and uh, get up at 4 o'clock morning and head back out. So, appreciate y'all watching. And we'll keep y'all posted. You got anything wise to say? Uh, keep at it. <laughs> Keep at it. Keep at it. Yeah. And congratulations to Tony Myers for killing another whopper. To the man, Mr. Tony Myers, the legend, the mentor. Appreciate you, buddy. You're doing an awesome job. That's, that's great. So, hopefully, you get that granddaughter on one there pretty quick. I need to be talking to her about that. So, keep it up. Good job, buddy. I mean, that's a monster buck. I wonder if it's an eight point you're chasing. But anyway, it's a daggum nice one. So, so congrats to Tony So and everybody else has been successful. So we'll see y'all tomorrow night. Out. Kansas, November 7th. This is the sixth morning hunt that I've done and uh, have seen deer four out of six mornings. So nice cool morning, about 40 degrees, a little windy, but that's the way I like it. So but I had a great morning. So. Seeing a raccoon, a coyote, a bald eagle, and a big old doe with a baby. Or not really a baby, but her this year's young and behind and uh, could have very well put her in the, got her flat and put her in the truck. But chose to pass because it was a perfect scenario. If she'd have had a buck behind her, man, it would have worked out great. So 
hunting this river bottom again. A lot of cover, bird habitat that they've created, and it's just great for deer travel and bedding and you know security and just blowdowns everywhere. Just a crazy place, but the deer come through there and come up. She so come up right up there. And both of them did right behind that little tree right there. Been a chip shot, basically. You know, of course, could have missed, but hey, probably not likely. But anyway, so again, a very good morning in Kansas, and uh, getting toward 11 o'clock. So let's go meet the brother and see if he's seen anything. So I mean, I know I've probably said this before, but this is a cool place. Y'all need to. You get a chance come check it out and you know we've really enjoyed it so far so the weather could have been a little bit better so but you know it is what it is but it is a very unique place so matthew had a very cool event yesterday with two little young bucks come up he had a decoy out and the two little young bucks kind of sparred for a second you know, it's pretty neat i wish we could get him a iPhone where he could video it better and I could actually transfer that data but I can't right now so might mess with it and try but I don't it kind of leaves grainy footage when you take a Samsung and put it to iPhone stuff so anyway I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do this evening and uh we're keeping y'all updated
y'all. I'm pretty dang sure I just got a good one. You might not be a monster, but I think it's a dang good one. It's a tall white horn rack. So gonna live, give him a little bit. I'm gonna go over to him. Well, there he is, y'all. A pretty nice nine point. Probably, a, I don't know, 125, 130 inches. He's a nice one. Very, very pleased. And he, uh, drunk call, got him in. He was walking parallel to me about 100 yards out. A sage feeling, I give him the grunt, like a long grunt, then a couple tending grunts, and he comes straight down. Very, very, very nice buck. Hey everybody, welcome back to 18 Outdoors. Well, one of the brothers has got lucky so far. Not a monster buck, but a dead gum nice one, and he come into the 18 Outdoor grunt call. He was going sideways across the hill in front of me about 100 yards. Give him a few grunts and a couple of tendons. He'd come running down, stop, look, come on a little bit more and was facing me. And I had to make a decision. He looked long, tiny, and looked real good. He ain't a bad buck, very nice, really. I'm happy with him. So, And uh, probably 250 pound deer, but awesome day in the woods with my brother. What do you think, brother? Cool. Huh? Good job. Will it work? It worked. He ain't gonna make 140, I don't think, but, <laughs> but anyway, it's a nice buck. Thank y'all for watching, and uh, we'll give some tips and stuff on how we done this and uh, how we broke the land down a little bit and how we done our scouting, so we gotta get this baby worked up, so thank y'all for watching. Well, all righty here, y'all. Today is November 10th at night. Sitting here relaxing a little bit, staring at something in the sink. I don't really know what that is. Got the old brother sitting there, catching up with his phone duties. Yep, gotta do it. Gotta keep up or catch back up when we get back. So we haven't done an evening update in a couple nights, have we? Nope. We've been hard after it and this day gum tiring. I mean, we ain't as young as we used to be. Or we ain't as good as we once was, but we're good once than we ever was. So, so anyway, day before yesterday we seen a couple deer. So we, we, ain't, we have not been not one day without seeing deer, right? One of us, you know, if not both of us, so we've sat about eight days of hunting, I think, whether it be half a day or off or going to two different places. So, and there's a couple of times we only hunted like either the evening or the morning. Like this morning, we only hunted morning, so but that's because it was up one o'clock in the morning working on that deer. So, so y'all saying, saying a little bit about the deer, but the update on deer is. He scored around 130 inches. I kind of rough scored him, so very nice buck. You know, our goal was 140, but you know, when you see one of them suckers, because the story is, I'm sitting there in my tree and I see something move and see this white set of antlers up in the edge, but like cut over slash CRP slash uh, sage field stuff, just nasty stuff. And I see it walking across and I take that period grunt call, 18 outdoor grunt call, 
get that. Just a loud grunt to get him to stop and look. And then done three tending grunts with that two turning back behind me and he come trotting down the hill fast. So, so I had to make a decision. He had tall looking tines. I mean, he had like 10 inch two, so which is nice. So, you know, you know, kind of unusual for anything we'd see in Alabama. So he stopped, looked, and he come on some more and stopped. And at that point I had to make a decision because you know, once, I don't know how these deer are going to do, but Alabama deer, if they don't see another deer when you're doing something like that, they fix them and get spooky. So, anyway, made your shot. Just watched him go 60, 70 yards and lay down. So, so it was, was perfect scenario, really. So, of course, it took us a while to get him out. You know, his big old body sucker, we had to go get the cart and come back and then bring him back to camp and uh, do all that good work. So, great night. So, it's just, we're kind of sore a little bit. So, you sore? Little so. so we went back after we didn't get up a little bit late and then we went back matthew hunted this evening and i'm gonna let him tell his story so. go ahead don't be shy it's about 4 45 i had a little six point come in same little six point i think we've been seeing doing this little licking branch thing Looking all cute because of this little baby thing. Then after he uh got started walking, he kind of got downwind me a little bit. Then he got nervous and left. Then about five minutes later, I seen the same little tail flicking stuff. I thought in the same area, but then I got looking at us and this buck started coming toward me and stuff. It looked like a I don't know, pretty wide frame. Definitely a three-year-old shooter. So I'd ranged prior to a place where he was going, and I sh when I shot, I don't know if I under undershot or what. Well, but anyway, we're gonna have a late night tonight, and thinking about it. So we want to go. Uh, hopefully, recover the deer tomorrow, or make sure he's gonna be all right. That's a go. Ask, hey. Some things happen, that's why I was hunting, not harvesting. Yeah, it's not, it's not or killing or whatever. So yeah, so we're gonna get up pretty early, get over there and break daylight and go. He didn't even find his air or anything, so he's kind of worried about living low in the leg where it, where it might not have hurt it, which would be fine. You know, best case scenario is finding it, of course, but second best is that maybe it'll, it'll recuperate from it so so we'll yeah we'll was, verify all that tomorrow so. yeah it was quartering to me it was just pretty hard so i tucked it up really tight on the shoulder and i'm i might have down got too tight on the shoulder and i think i was a little bit low well mm -hmm. i didn't have no light knock so i'm not sure and it was right at getting close to dark so best thing to do if you don't know back out and that's what i did what do you think about the trip so far? Oh, <laughs> it's been an outstanding trip. You couldn't ask for anything better. I don't know how many deer we've seen. Yeah. I, I, nearly every day. Bucks. It's just, yeah, the buck after buck after buck. And they're not even the same bucks. <laughs> That's crazy. Kansas is a place, you know, everybody talks about Iowa. And uh, the only negative thing I, I can say about Iowa is the public land there after the bow season when they have them shotgun hunts and stuff the locals do man drives when they public land with shotguns and you know straight walls and they work on them pretty hard where kansas as far as well i understand it all these public lands that we're hunting they don't have any kind of gun hunting and then i'm telling you it's some nasty you know where they had that flood and all that stuff crazy habitat that can grow some monsters and you know and we've seen six or seven well, you know, sure enough, Alabama shooters, you know, and, and decent, you know, real good bucks here, two of them that uh, Matthew's saying was monsters, you know, so. Yeah, so, compared to what you killed, if if, it's, if that one weighed 220, then that one I seen is going to be pushing 300. <laughs> yeah. Because it uh, made it look really small. And you know, we're only talking eight days of hunting. You know, we've been here two weeks, but we've done a bunch of scouting and it's a couple of rain outs and stuff like that. So, and uh 
we've been playing another thing is is the areas we've been hunting we've been playing that wind kind of tight so we we're, we're hunting as a team kind of tag team in the area and one of the areas we if the wind is right we can both hunt in it if not matthew can manipulate and uh hunt in there and i just hunt a different spot so and we've done that and it's worked out fantastic you know uh, i don't know about <laughs> fantastic but what well we need one yeah, more buck I, you know, I got i don't know if we did that one what day for yesterday day for yesterday right saying another good buck you know early in the morning it kind of got in my wind when you get one that's in the bucket and cutting I don't know if we've done that video, but you had one big and come out there and looked at decoy and was kind of spooked about it or something, or didn't like it. Mm, where I did that one. Yeah, but that one. This was the next day where I had that one run up. Was oh yeah, yeah. Like no, we didn't. Eight. You didn't. Yeah, you didn't do. You got two guts. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was a. That was two other bucks. Yep. That was another uh, good shooter. Thick, thick beams and stuff, but he was uh, 80 something yards away. But he kind of got downwind of me, snuck up behind me. But I had some cows, kind of messed up the situation a little bit. Yeah, we've had to have a few cow issues, but that, I mean, that's just part of it. I mean, but, you know, it, for it being our first time here and, you know, and, and doing what we've done, we're, we're pretty proud so far. I mean, it's been a crazy trip and, been, and enjoyed every bit of it. So. Yeah, it's it's something when all your tactics and all your planning and all that stuff work together it's just it's kind of self-gratifying whether you get something or not yeah the amount of deer i've seen and stuff and got to enjoy and see yeah. them do their regular nature learn a lot about deer habits right and that's the hardest part you know when you're co when you're coming to a place that you've never been and then putting yourself into position you know, to see the deer and stuff, that's the hardest part. Getting shots, you know, is, is a little bit different because especially bow hunting or crossbow hunting, getting that 50 in range or whatever is is tough. I, I don't care where you go. So, but it's the hard, so that again, the hardest part is putting yourself in that position, you know, doing your e-scouting and all that and then finding areas, get over to do the boots on the ground and, and then making a plan and, and, and try to play the wind. Because the wind is kind of goofy out here at times. It gets kind of squirrely changes directions in a thing of millisecond you know and you wouldn't think it'd be like that with a lot of the flat ground out here but where we're hunting it's kind of hilly so yeah. one of you know most places we hunt is kind of hilly but that and then we kind of picked that on purpose you know because that's what we're kind of used to so but you know i think we might do a, a video before matt goes back home on how we what we looked at what we picked these areas and stuff like that because it's it, it, it could be a beneficial video, you know, especially when you're coming out here in this the western part of the states because in Alabama, you know, or in the south, big woods areas, so it's a little bit harder finding. I don't say it's easy out here, but it is kind of easier finding funnels and stuff. And that's just all I'm going to say right now. So it's because we might jinx ourselves, but it's been a, it's worked out pretty damn good. So. Last thoughts, our brother, before we go night night and then get up and go try to find his deer. So. No. 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 No final thoughts. Just uh, it's been a great trip. Yeah. Couldn't ask nothing better. You want to come back sometime? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh boy, I think that's a yes. It's different, <laughs> but yeah, it's very. You gotta be prepared to put in some miles, though. Yeah. <laughs> miles lots of miles yeah and, and and there's quite a bit of pressure in places too so you got to kind of play that because we got affected by pressure or you know a couple times you know so but that, that's just part of it because a lot of these blocks are smaller they don't you know have the massive tracks so, but still is a bunch of them and uh i drove around some today and it was some of that i weehaw and, and some of the other weehaw and it's that's some good looking places yeah it's a bunch of it too so all right we're gonna wrap this up Good night, night. We'll we'll update y'all tomorrow in the woods. We'll care to GoPro with us and kind of give y'all an update, see what happens. And uh... all right, y'all. It's the next morning. Got Chief Blood Tracker here. 
that's a drop of blood 800 yards away from initial impact so he ain't laid down circle jumping logs climbing hills so i think he's got like a low leg and maybe a piece of the brisket but Cause you know they ain't, if they ain't breathing they ain't coming up no hills good so so they ain't his lungs not touched so other than that was hoping like maybe it's cut an artery or bleed enough to to lay down but as big a body as these deer are up here that takes some dang you know it takes a lot of blood for alabama deer or southern deer and this this deer ain't bled no quarter of a pint yet so so but we're still looking but we i mean we're back into where the initial where the initial starts scouting this place. So, what do you think, brother? Mm. Mm. Come well, on. I ain't thinking. We stay on them hard now, but we we gonna give them the best opportunity that you know to to give up. But yeah, that's a few pink spots and the blood, not very much. So, but from past history, we know if they ain't laid down. Now they're still climbing hills and jumping over logs. They're still feeling pretty froggy. So, 800 yards, he ain't laid down. Nah. And he's three-legged. And he's three-legged. So, he was holding his leg, Matthew said, when he left. So, as far as we can tell, he's still holding it, but we ain't 100% sure now because we're in hard dirt. So, if it was in soft ground, you could tell he was holding it, so. He's leaving heavy track every once in a while. Yeah, got a big foot too. So, so we're gonna wrap this video up here. Yep, walk his edge. We're gonna walk this little edge around here just to see if it's like a lay down. Cause there's a bunch of bed and stuff right here. Another lamp. We're fixing to go back and pack up unless we find him and head on back south. Is that right? So, been yep. a been a that gum awesome hunt besides this part, but about a. This is the best hunt I guess I've ever been on that. Yep. So, but it, was, uh, it was about six yards farther than when I thought or more. So I misranged him. So he shot a little low, so. And he knew that last night, so he knew something. About. He backed down immediately. So, but we have to give it our best effort. I mean, as a hunter and uh, outdoorsman and conservationist, you've got to give it your effort to find them. And that's what we've done, so. Your responsibility. Yeah. So. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little grid right here on this stuff, and we're gonna head on back, get packed up, and head back south. So we appreciate y'all watching, appreciate y'all support. This is one crazy cool sign, which I talked to old farmer. He talked about there's some elk around, and he hated them. There's some elk droppings up on his shelf, below a sage field like. And above this canyon. So we found this while me and Mike or me and Matthew is tracking his buck, so he come through here and he's bleeding a drop every now and then, but he's past we're pushing a thousand yards or more right now. So. And he hasn't laid down, so uh Still one legged. Matthew thinks he's one legged, but I guarantee you he's putting a foot down to do all this stuff he's doing up these hills. There ain't no way he's hopping on three legs to cli climb what hill he's climbed. So, he might be limping, but that sucker's putting it down. There ain't no way he's climbing through all this mess. So. Anyway, that's pretty cool find to find his elk dropping. So. Like a, I guess cows or something. Like two of them maybe. So that was one. That's one that's been hanging out here like a young bull or something. But it's pretty neat. Good luck, y'all. Congratulations, Daniel Williams. He he killed a monster. So in Missouri. So some of those southern folks is going up north and doing pretty dang good. So game exciting exiting words to say there, brother. Oh no, they ain't that excited about anything like this. <laughs> no, no, I can't blame him. He's a little upset and frustrated, but hey. So, opportunities have been presented to us. So, 
I mean, we've, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's crazy. So three shots, right? So three, yeah. three actual shots. So, I mean, it's, and stuff we've passed up. So again, y'all get outside the little box you're living in. If you, if you're not, um, uh, venturing out and going to other states because some of these states have got some great opportunities and Kansas is one of them. I'm telling you, it's, it's, uh, you gotta have your hiking boots though. Yeah, you gotta have hiking boots. That's if you plan on doing some hiking and trying scouting and stuff, like we do. So be prepared to do that because we got we hunted six different places, I think, and we seen bucks and five of them. So so that tells you we kind of jumped around a little bit. We had a couple core areas and we played that wind. So it's so uh, and it's worked out pretty good for us. So so it's. It's been amazing, and we're going home. So we'll see y'all. Y'all get them flat. Good luck. Hey, everybody. Thank y'all for watching the videos. Well, again, we appreciate y'all's support. If you haven't liked, please like, subscribe, and uh, if you don't care, if you haven't got one of our books, check out Amazon and get a book. Also, we got a link on there where you can, uh, on our YouTube channel, where you can go and we got a little store set up like if you're interested in any kind of merchandise shirts and stuff you can check that out and uh, we really appreciate anything like that so again we appreciate y'all support you know keep watching we're gonna keep trying to share the outdoors and how we do the things and try and try to help everybody that we can enjoy the outdoors and you know we do this for just basically because of the environment and the community that's involved and built around hunting so again we appreciate y'all like, share, and we'll see y'all again. Bye.